Hello, I'm Dale Keggy. I'm going to be your host today for a very special edition of Alumni Pride. I am the executive director of the Southern York County School District Foundation and have a strong affiliation with the Alumni Association. And this is a special day for us because this is, when we're taping this show, graduation day. And on graduation day, we've started a tradition of honoring distinguished alumni. Today, we have two very distinguished alumni with us, Ronnie and Rob McCurry, the McCurry brothers. Ronnie from the class of 1985 and Rob from the class of 1989. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having us. It's really a pleasure and an honor to have you uh, come back to Glenrock to your alma mater. <laughs> this is great. Appreciate that, Dave. Uh, yeah. just, just by way of introduction, uh, uh, let me just uh, summarize a few things that you're going to be here this evening as your introductory uh, remarks. Um, you were at Susquehannock, and we noted that uh, you pursued differing interests, as most brothers do, but you shared one common passion, and that passion was for a love of music, particularly uh, bluegrass music. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just by way of introduction, can you give us, uh, uh, and let, let's start uh, with Rob. The reason I'm doing that is, is that I had an older brother, and he would always go first. <laughs> uh, uh, starting with Rob, uh, if you had to define bluegrass music, how, how would you define that? What differentiates it from other art forms? Well, if, uh, I guess the number one thing is it's, uh, I mean, your pure bluegrass music is all acoustic music. There's no amps or, you know, I mean, you sing on a microphone, and that's about it. You know, there's, uh, and, uh, it's the banjo, which I play, mandolin, which he plays, a guitar, an upright bass, and a fiddle. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's the instrumentation. And uh, and uh, bluegrass music really started in uh, the late '40s with Bill Monroe, who's known as the father of bluegrass music. Mm -hmm. But he had been playing music for a long time before they really, before this band came together that defined bluegrass, and it was uh, Bill Monroe. Lester Flat on guitar, Earl Scruggs on banjo, and uh, Chubby Wise on the fiddle, and Cedar Cranewater on the bass. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, that's kind of what that is the the definitive bluegrass sound, which that's the one that's like stood the test of time. That's really when it was invented, you know. It's really a young music, really. It's from the '40s, you know. Mm -hmm. It's really not that old, and. Good. A lot of people say folk music in overdrive, uh -huh. you know. mm -hmm. but the songs are real life <coughs> songs, you know, things that really happen to people, whether they're sad or happy, or it's just true, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, going on after graduation, um, you started playing uh, with your father. Actually, mm -hmm. when you were in high school, wasn't it? You mm -hmm. actually started playing with your father yes. in high school. Um, the Del McCurry Band, at that time, I believe they were called uh, the Dixie Pals. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. My and dad started the band in 1966. Mm -hmm. And um, I was born in 67, and he was born in 71. So the band name was Del McCurry and the Dixie Pals till up into the uh, late 80s, I think, or early 90s. But we started, yeah, I was uh, 14 <coughs> when I started to play with my dad. So we've been doing it a long time. I, I think he was 15 or 16, yeah, I was so. 15 when I started, you know, and and once we started, we we started, we, we played every show, you know, so. Yeah. Missed a little bit of school. <laughs> <laughs> but no more, no more than we had to, Dad. He he'd be sure and get us back just as quick as we could get back. Uh, Mondays, yeah. <laughs> Mondays were rough. <laughs> hey, well, that bring, brings uh, up an interesting point because I noticed in, in reading both of your uh, biographical sketches um, that you, you you really were not active in formal Susquehannock musical activities. Mm -hmm. um, and right. all of your musical train, all of your musical training, really, I guess you just picked up from from being around your dad and around the house and on the mm -hmm. road. That's right. We uh, were taught by ear, and uh, I did myself. I started to play the violin at uh, Friendship Elementary, uh -huh. and then I went into uh, Southern Middle School here, and. I guess that was Mrs. Yetter was teaching yes, the strings at that time. Exactly, right? mm -hmm. and and uh, 
I credit her uh, for kind of keeping me on a path there. To she was a g really good teacher. She was a g really good music teacher and and patient and all that. And my my problem was I it came to a point where I had to decide because I played sports. I had to make a decision one evening whether I was going to go do a recital or play this. Uh, it was a basketball game, mm -hmm. a big basketball game mm -hmm. at the time. And at the time, I chose sports, so I, I, I didn't go back to the violin, and I started on the mandolin. Like a year later, I just kind of still wanted to play music and sports, but uh, music kind of took pro top priority. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, of course, uh, going on with, with your resume, uh, you worked with the band, they changed their name to the Del McCurry Band, mm -hmm. and at some point around 1992, you would become so successful that the family moved to Nashville. Mm -hmm. uh, what were the underlying reasons for that move? Well, a big part of that was, uh, we, we, uh, we were, we were really, really, you know, picking up some steam, you know, and we knew that as much as we loved it here, we needed to be there. Um, part of it at the time, set, it was uh, for seemed like where we were traveling to, which is everywhere basically. But it was a, more of a central location. For one thing, it was easier to get places mm -hmm. from Nashville uh, if you were going to the deep south, or you know, even if you were going to the west coast. You know, where we have a huge major airport with direct flights. You know, all that stuff, but. Uh, also, too, at that time, there was, uh, you know, uh, some big, like TNN, na uh, television shows, you know, mm -hmm. in Nashville. TNN was really big at the time, and they were pretty open to bluegrass, and, and once we got there, we, we, we knew we could get on the TV, you know, which was, that was, you know, uh, that was pretty big 15 years ago, you know, TV, I think, that, that type of TV was bigger then than now, I think, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, yeah, a lot more live uh, musical performances, you know, on the Nashville network. And then, you know, as the the Nashville television scene changed with CMT, Country Music Television, and Great American Country, GAC, it kind of turned more into uh, a lot less live and more videos mm -hmm. and things like that. So, but at the time we were at a good, we were at a good point. Uh, when we moved there for television, we had an agent in Nashville and had for a while, and and we got down there and it just all started to to really click. And uh, you know, as as years went by and we got, got involved in a lot of recordings with other people and were able to do that because we were there, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, played the Grand Ole Opry, <coughs> which is. You know, it's it's the epitome of country music and, and bluegrass, and there's there's only been since 1929. There's only been uh, 80 couple people that have been asked to become members, and our, my father was asked. So that's an incredible milestone, you know. And as uh, someone said, you just just think of it. You know, you're one of your your dad is one of the 80 some people in the entire world that have been <laughs> asked. To to be a part of this family, you know. Mm -hmm. This is, a, it's been a lot of success come from moving there. Well, yeah, from that date in 1992, you, you talk about success. Uh, that, that's certainly an understatement. Uh, <laughs> just just to, to uh, mention some of the things that, that you have achieved, we're talking, um, by my count, really more than 20 album releases mm -hmm. over that period of time. Um, the International Bluegrass Association has awarded you uh, either individually or as a group with over 30 awards, including Entertain of the Year, Best Instrumental Album, Recorded Event of the Year. We're talking about Grammy nominations and, and in fact, the epitome, you talk about the peak of a career, an actual Grammy award. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, to say that you were successful is from 1992, that's, yeah. <laughs> that Grammy looks yeah, really good <laughs> set in my life. Let's put that in, in, in real perspective. Um, so it, it's a long way from Glenrock to all of that, I guess is what, what we're saying. Um, 
Uh, one thing, and, and then I want to talk to you a little bit about your experiences here at Susquehanna, but, but one thing that I'm curious about is in all the, the fantastic venues that you have played in, all the stages that you've been on, all the performers that you've stood beside, what, what stands out as the most impressive and meaningful? Let, let's start with, with you, Ronnie. Wow. Um, you know, uh, I think there's been a many, many things that I could mention. Uh, I, probably my proudest moment is to, was the, when they inducted my father into the Grand Ole Opry because, uh, you know, we worked long and hard to be there. My father at the time, when he was growing up, he grew up in, uh, uh, in around Thomasville and Spring Grove in that area. Mm -hmm. And he would listen to the Grand Ole Opry back in the 40s, in the 50s, and it was, you know, it was a huge, uh, it, it reached it reached all the way from Nashville to here, you know. I mean, it was just one of the major, it had 50,000 watts and it had a long reach and, uh, like I said, the epitome of country music. And for for him to be selected, that was a, that was a quite a highlight. That playing uh, Carnegie Hall, you know, mm. that's that's pretty impressive and to uh, be able to travel the world and have uh, fans all over the world to come up and talk to you about uh, your music and and like I said this music is, has got a lot of real life stories about it and have people come up to you and tell you, tell you that you know that your music has touched them I think that's the most rewarding you know mm -hmm. and uh, Rob, anything stand out yeah. with you? <laughs> yeah, well, all that for sure. The Opry, you know, I know how much that, I mean, I know how much it meant to me to see, you know, through my dad that, you know, that was, he grew up listening to that, and I'm sure never dreaming that he would ever be, ever even get to be there at the Opry to play, but to be a member, you know. Carnegie Hall, we play, there's two rooms in Carnegie Hall. There's a small room, it's Ankle Hall, they call that one. And the first time we went, we played that one, you know. The second time when we were booked back, they put us in the big hall. I mean, that's, it's like, man, Carnegie Hall. Wow. <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah, it really doesn't get too much better than that. No. <laughs> and we played Lincoln Center uh, recently, back yeah. in the fall. We played Lincoln Center. That's that's a great one. And But we've also played, like, world music festivals and yeah. you know, places where, you know, I'm sure those people don't have a clue what we're doing there but they like it uh -huh. you know? yeah and uh, the same with us I mean you, you see these bands from all over the world on the stage and you I mean you just wonder I mean it kind of makes you wonder about you know music's a strange thing it's it, it brings people together but uh, you know there's some things that I've seen from you know other parts of the world these bands you know that it's like man I don't I don't I don't know what they're doing but it's cool it's great <laughs> You know? <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, and people just love music. You know? mm -hmm. That's, and uh, also, I mean, we've had people come up to us and tell us, hey, you know, we, your music brought our family together. You know, we were distant, and now we have this common thing, and we, we come see you guys, and we get together, and it's, you know, brings people together. You know, we probably drove some apart, too. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Well, uh, Talking, just talking about some of you, some of your successes, and and I believe that that successes have have roots, and obviously from what you're saying, the strongest roots that you have are, are with your family and your yes. dad. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, um, can you look back, uh, let let's say, at some of your experiences here in the small town environment of Glen Rock, and specifically maybe at Susquehanna High School? Some of the memories you might have, some of the values that you learned here, that 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 connected and drove some of that success. Mm -hmm. Ronnie, um, you know, uh, we let's see. When we grew up here, we of course we stayed here until 1992. So I was 25 years old when we left, and um, just the friendships that you develop. And the people that you meet, and uh, in their, in your surroundings, and it it shapes you, it it uh, it molds you, and and I I cannot uh, go anywhere without thinking about the roots, you know, our roots of 
where we come from and um, and uh, the friends that that we made that, that, that I have friends that I met in kindergarten and first grade and we're still friends and you know I know a lot of people that uh, are envious of that you know they don't have they don't have their the friendships and to me I just don't know anything different I just have uh, collected these friends you know that that I'm still we still talk we still see each other and some live here still some have moved away but we talk about our days here and what we did and uh, and how it, it just brought us all together you know and it's it, there's a lot of great memories you know from for me I played sports I played on the basketball teams I played some baseball and I didn't get to play a whole lot because I missed a lot of practices, you know. So <laughs> I, I, I benched it a lot, but uh, and uh, but still, I uh, I played sports from the time I could join SYC, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and I'll have all those friends, and that that's mainly a lot of the stories that we talk about, and and uh, just. I have a lot of memories. I can still smell the gym, you know. Mm. You still have that smell. You can, <laughs> the senses, you know. And, and coming here on on uh, Friday night football games, you know. Things like that that um, I'm sure everybody that, I, consider, I consider, consider this a small town, you know. And I'm sure it's grown a lot since we left. But that small town feel is, uh, is something no matter where you go uh, it's your town you know you have that feeling and that I carry that with me mm -hmm. <laughs> now Rob when you were here um, going back to your days at Susquehanna um, and, and I was here I started working for the school district in 1982 so mm -hmm. our tenure <laughs> somewhat overlapped um, the principal of the high school was Bill Inane, remember Bill Inane, yes. and the assistant principal was John Baker. Now, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and say that you never really ran into those two too much. <laughs> it's not a good thing when you're on first name basis with the assistant principal. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But if you look at back at, uh, at some of the other uh, the characters and prominent names in, that, in the culture of the 80s on the faculty and so forth, yeah. at that time, a any of them jump out at you when, you when you're sharing those old stories and the memories? Any teachers that, that oh yeah, I remember so and so yeah. did that? Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. There's a a bunch of them, and uh, it's something I had a math teacher named Mr. Scripco. Oh, and I actually, Mr. Scripco, yeah. I saw him outside. Yes. And I didn't get to see him. I, but, uh, I mean, I saw him, but I didn't get to talk to him. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, he, I remember him, uh, I don't know, something about the way he taught. It, it just, you know, it sunk in. You know, I could learn from him. You know, there's, I guess it was just his way of doing things. He was a he was a good one and a good guy too. Same, you know, it was always was good to the kids. Same like as good as he could be, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking about Mr. Lauch a few minutes ago. I always liked the way he taught people too. You know, uh -huh. he, was, he didn't put up with a lot, but <laughs> as long as you were, <laughs> uh -huh. as long as you kind of did what you were supposed to do, you could get along with him fine, you know. <laughs> and. Uh, but gosh, there were so many of uh, them. Mr. Blau, I remember we talking about him. Uh, Mr. Sutton, Mr. Mr. Blau. Sutton. Yeah. Mr. Ryan Nearson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, gosh, and, and so all many, those yeah. names uh, kind of defined that whole era mm -hmm. yes. of Susquehanna. You know, it, every generation, uh, every decade kind of has a, that's my observation, every decade kind of has a different character. And those gentlemen yeah. really defined the character of the school yeah. mm -hmm. uh, back in the 80s. Uh, you've had a chance now. Ho hopefully, uh, we're going to get an opportunity to take you around the school and, mm -hmm. and show yeah. you some of the places, uh, the haunts that, that uh, sparked some of those memories. But I think you're going to find that the school looks an awful lot different <laughs> now than it did back in the 80s, just uh, from the time that you walked on campus here. Yeah. Any differences really jump out at you? You know, uh, for one thing, uh, I don't, I didn't didn't come we've just been in the in the admin part here in the and also the uh, in the gym in the gym and I that's as far as I've gotten so mm -hmm. far but I really want to take the tour and see it 
and uh, you know the gym looks the same looks the same to me but I, I, I wanted to say one thing about Mr. Lenning mm -hmm. sure when uh, this was a turning point for me um, I was 16 years old and my dad got uh, an offer to go to Europe for um, it was about four and a half five weeks and I was I was really determined I said well I, I you know I really want to go that's a lot of school to miss <laughs> you know <laughs> and and uh, I came home I, came, I went to the office and I talked to Mr. Mr. Lenane and then uh, I came, went home and said dad Mr. Lenane would like to talk to you you know, and he's like, oh, uh -huh. <laughs> about. <laughs> and uh, he, came, he came in and talked to him, and he told him we were going to visit like 10 countries and, uh, you know, play music in all these countries and, and get in the sea a lot. And he talked to, to my dad, and he said, you know, he's going to le learn a lot more in that five weeks than he would here. And... I'm going to let him go, and he doesn't have to make his work up. And uh, I, it, was, it was amazing, really. I mean, and I did. The, what I learned in those five weeks, you know, you carry with you the rest of your life, you know. And I thought that was admirable of him to let me do that, mm -hmm. you know. Probably violated a few school policies. And <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but he's not here anymore, so that's, that's okay. Right. We can share that story. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to edit that one. Yeah, right, right now, we'll leave, we'll leave that one. In. Yeah. Um, one Mr. of the things that uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, Mr. Baker. I can still Mr. see Baker, yeah. walking the halls here. You know, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, certainly a legend of the '80s. Yes, he was, was John Baker. I never had any cross words with any of those guys, and and uh, uh, just all smiles with me and him. You know, uh -huh. <laughs> oh, that's great. Great story. Uh, one of the things uh, that, that you're going to have an opportunity this evening to do when you address uh, our graduating class, uh, this is the um, uh, class of 2009, you're going to have an opportunity to, let's say, give them some advice as they go out into the world and, and hopefully at least aim for the kind of success that you two have achieved. Um, any preview that you can give us about uh, the, the kind of advice that you're giving them? <laughs> man dream big you know yeah dream big and and just go after it and you know even you know I, I know and I'm sure you know people that have you know they've they've left high school they've gone off to college and they've studied whatever this field is they've studied and they get out of college and they don't even do that something takes them a whole other direction you know I think they should, you know, people don't, you know, don't be afraid of that, you know, you can always come back, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, you can always go back to where you were, but if you stay there, you you know, you, you may never move forward, you know, go with it, you yeah. can always come back. <laughs> yeah, that's true, <laughs> you know, you know? Yeah. I mean, what we, what we have done, we've done it together and there's been ups and there's been downs and it's, it's a roller coaster, you know, but if you keep a goal out front and you just kind of keep your mind on it and uh, and work towards it you know uh, luckily we've done it together um, but I that's just like you said dream big follow your dreams you know mm -hmm. whether it's right here settling down and and uh, getting a job if you find something the saying goes if you find some if find a job you love You'll never have to work another day in your life. Mm -hmm. Right, right. <laughs> Heard that many times, and there's been occasions where I thought I've achieved that, but obviously not <laughs> to the same kind of level that you two have. I mean, I just get the impression, uh, just from seeing you rehearse and, and the way you carry yourselves when your instruments are there, that you must love every minute of your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty good time. We do, you know. It's it's just been a part of us, you know. It's, uh it's like, you know, if it's, uh, you, whatever you're successful at, we have started young. We started at it really young and knew what we wanted, mm -hmm. you know. 
Well, Rob, tell me, uh, we've talked a lot about uh, your family roots, uh, your, your roots with your father and, and your home family. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about your family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got a, uh, my wife Lisa, she's a, she's a West Virginia gal. We met, I met her playing music, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, got a uh, six-year-old daughter named Monroe, who she's, she likes to dance and sing already. <laughs> and, She's playing around on her piano a bit, you know. So, uh, of course, my wife's family's musical too. They all played a little bit of music, you know. And then I've got a got a two and a half year old son. This is a, his name's Del McCurry, actually. So. Mm. <laughs> he's a <clears throat> he's a pistol. I don't know how he's going to handle this. <laughs> His commencement tonight, he might have to be removed. Oh. <laughs> He's a pretty wild one. Uh -huh. Ronnie, how about your family? Well, I uh, I met my wife playing music, and it was the, the year I graduated, 85, that summer. And we played uh, up in uh, upstate New York. My wife is from Massachusetts, and she came with her family to the festival, and I met her, and... Uh, Eventually, uh, you know, we we got married, and we have three kids. I have an 11-year-old son, Evan, who plays the guitar and piano, and I have a uh, nine-year-old son, Joshua, who plays the drums and a little bit of bass. And I have a six-year-old daughter, Emma, and Emma she uh, she loves to sing and dance. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> and they're all going to be with you this evening. They'll all be here. Okay, it'll be a treat for us uh, <laughs> to see your whole family together. Our whole family is uh, our yeah. whole family is here. You know, our whole you know our sister. sister. She graduated in 1982. Oh. From here, she'll be here, and our nephew Jacob, and my mother and father, and aunts and uncles, and all that. Oh, that that's great. Yeah. They're all still here. You know, they're all here in York County. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, I, I want to shake your hands. It's been a genuine yeah. pleasure uh, <laughs> meeting and, and talking with you. Yes, and uh, I'll tell you, I'm going to ask for your autograph later on this evening. <laughs> I'll tell you that if you don't mind. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here for this special edition of Alumni Pride. Uh, we had the pleasure of discussing uh, the experiences at Susquehannock and afterwards with Ronnie and Rob McCurry, the Distinguished uh, Alumni Award winners for 2009. Thank you for joining us and we will talk to you later.